So here's the problem with mild cognitive impairment. And this is a, a term that's used often and people are sent home and said, oh, you know, it's mild cognitive impairment. I just heard on a, on a Zoom a couple of nights ago with two physicians, husband and wife, and the, the, ma the man is clearly undergoing uh, uh, cognitive changes and went in and cl clearly has uh, relatively uh, early stage Alzheimer's, but clearly uh, uh, very impaired. And his neurologist told him, hey, your MRI looks okay. I think you're fine. This is just normal aging. Uh, and nothing could be further from the truth. I think this is a concerning term. So here's the problem with MCI. This is like telling someone that you have mildly metastatic cancer. I mean, that is the problem. This is a relatively late stage. What we call MCI should be called relatively late stage Alzheimer's disease. So you go through four phases when you develop Alzheimer's disease. Phase one is you're asymptomatic, and during that time you can actually see abnormalities on PET scan, abnormalities on spinal fluid analysis, so you can see that the pathophysiological changes have already begun. If you don't do anything about that, within a few years, you may enter the second of four stages, and we call that subjective cognitive impairment. Now, by definition, then, uh, you have a situation in which you know there's something wrong. Often your spouse or coworkers know there's something wrong, but when you take standardized testing, you're still able to score in the normal range. Now, as you can imagine, People here are very smart people. You're going to score in the normal range, again, until relatively late in the pathophysiological process. That is a problem. The good news is this lasts, on average, according to the epidemiologists, about a decade. So we actually have a tremendous window of opportunity. What's currently happen happening, people are making this diagnosis very, very late. It's as if we were waiting for diabetic ketoacidosis to diagnose, di to diagnose diabetes and then saying to people, okay, let's see when you come in with DKA if changing your diet will help. We're looking at this process way, way too late in it. So the good news is we have a tremendous opportunity to make it so that Alzheimer's is truly a rare disease, which is exactly what it should be.